While he was still saying that he was not running for president, the most definitive sign from Texas Governor Rick Perry that he was running is that he all of a sudden started doing stuff that he did not do before as Texas governor. Things like meeting with the prime minister of Latvia and meeting with the former president of Pakistan, Pervez Musharraf. That is not exactly day in the life stuff for a Texas governor, at least for this Texas governor. But it is the kind of thing that you do if you're a presidential contender and you want to up your worldliness quotient. Now that Governor Perry is running and trying to keep up the perception that he is grounded in international affairs, Governor Perry today wrote an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal on the subject of Israel. The man who has been whipping up crowds by talking about his American state seceding from the Union, who has floated the idea, quite literally, of breaking up the United States of America now, uh, is now as a presidential candidate lending his sage international advice to the world's most delicate tinderbox of a region. With protesters in Egypt, which borders Israel, uh, ransacking the Israeli embassy, with the Palestinians saying they will ask the UN next week for statehood, with Israel promising grave consequences if the Palestinians do ask for that, one campaign for president wants you to look at the delicacy of that situation and think, boy, I wish Rick Perry was handling this. While he was president, Jimmy Carter brokered the first agreement by any Arab country to recognize Israel, that peace treaty between Egypt and Israel. Uh, the Israeli Prime Minister and the Egyptian President won the Nobel Peace Prize for that agreement. Their peace treaty is still in effect, but it is under strain now, more than 30 years later. Yesterday at the Carter Center in Atlanta, I spoke with President Carter and asked him what he thinks happens next here. On the issue of uh, Mideast peace, yes. um, after the overthrow of Hosni Mubarak in Egypt in the, in the Arab Spring uprising there, have you been distressed to see um, Egyptians attacking the Israeli embassy there yes. and this sort of outpouring of upset and hostility to Israel in, in post-revolutionary Egypt. Yeah. Upset but not surprised. Mm. When I was in office, we had two major agreements between Israel and Egypt. One was the Camp David Accords in September of 1978. It basically dealt with the rights of the Palestinians, where the Israelis agreed for the full application of United Nations Resolution 242 the prohibition against achieving land as a result of war. And the Israelis agreed to withdraw their military and political entities from the occupied territories and to grant the Palestinians full autonomy. That was basically the Camp David Accords. And then we followed up that six months later, in the spring of 1979, with a treaty of peace between Israel and Egypt. A lot of people now meld the two, but they're completely different. And in the last 30 years, the Israelis have not complied with any of their promises concerning Palestinian rights or withdrawing from occupied territories. And basically, Mubarak has ignored that failure. But he has insisted on the full observance of a treaty between Egypt and Israel. So Mubarak accepted that, that effect or, or that result or that situation. The people of Egypt have never done that. Hmm. They have always insisted that the Palestinian rights should be on an equal basis with the treaty of peace between Egypt and Israel. And so it was not a surprise to me that the demonstrators wanted to see the Israelis removed. It was a surprise and a great disappointment to me that the military junta that now rules Egypt temporarily at least did not defend the embassy. Hmm. They should have because there had been a 12-foot wall built around the Israeli embassy to protect it. And it was torn down, you might say, brick by brick, with plenty of time for the military to send in Egyptian troops to protect the embassy. That's a major setback and a very tragic thing to happen. But my prediction to you is that the basic terms of a treaty of peace between Israel and Egypt will not be adversely affected because the Egyptians know that one of the best things that ever happened to them is to have peace with Israel. And the Israelis also know that the Egyptian armed forces were the only major threat to them militarily. And that, that was in four different wars that existed in the 25 years before I became president. Mm. Uh, Syria and Jordan and the rest of them had no real uh, threat militarily. So I help, was able to help move remove that threat to Israel. So I think it's so valuable to both Israel and Egypt that the tr peace treaty will be preserved and honored by both sides. But the rights of the Palestinians 
have not been honored. And the Palestinians have been very deeply uh, disillusioned uh, in the last few years. I would say by two, <clears throat> the two major speeches that President Obama has made, one in Cairo in 2009 where he said no more settlements, zero settlements. That, was a, that sent a, a wave of uh, jubilation to the Palestinian community. And, and so, the second one was earlier this year, I believe, when he said that any future peace has got to be predicated on the 1967 borders with minor adjustments brought about by negotiation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there again, the Palestinians said, well, this is what the United States has always said, is what the United Nations said, and so forth. But Israel has rejected both of those premises put forward by Obama himself. And the Palestinians now, I think, in, in desperation, since his American influence in, in, in the Middle East is practically zero now, uh, have said, we'll go to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be a crisis that will evolve in the next few days. As the Palestinians ask for recognition for statehood, maybe in the Security Council, almost certainly in the General Assembly. And of course the United States will veto the Security Council. And the General Assembly would probably vote uh, 140 to 150 nations in favor of Palestinian uh, statehood. Which means that, that Palestine, if people want to look it up, would have basically the same rights as the Vatican now. Mm -hmm. Not a full member, but the right to participate in international fora and in, and in international uh, organizations and so forth. Do you think the United States should support, should support that? I do. I think it would be good for Israel and the United States to support, to support that, as we supported Israel in 1948 when they took the same move. And, and then have a good faith negotiation based on what the United States policy has always been, that is the 1967 borders, with a premise that Israel withdraw from the occupied territories. But that's a premise I don't believe that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is willing to make, although some of his predecessors including his, his immediate predecessor, Omar, Omar, said this is what we need to do. President Carter, thank you so much for this time. I really appreciate it. It's good it. to be with you. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you for having us. Thank here. you. Thank you for coming.